Welcome movie lovers of the world to another top 10. In today's video I'll be counting down my top 10 drag movies. This video features a guest appearance by Larry from LC Screen Talk. Links to his pages and channel will be posted in the description box so be sure to check him out and subscribe to him if you're not already. Now it's time to get on with the list. Starting this list off at number 10 is 2005's Kinky Boots. Directed by Julian Jarrold and written by Geoff Dion and Tim Firth, this based on a true story movie tells the story of a struggling British shoe factory's owner who forms an unlikely partnership with a drag queen in hopes of saving his family's business. Kinky Boots gives us an entertaining story that simultaneously teaches us that no matter the differences, whether gay or straight, you can find a kinship anywhere if you're just willing to open your eyes to what's around you, while showing us that we're not born to be who people want us to be. They're comfy. Thank God, I thought it was just me. Coming in at number 9 is 1999's Flawless. Directed and written by Joel Schumacher, this film follows an ultra-conservative police officer who suffers from a debilitating stroke and is recommended a rehabilitative program that includes singing lessons which he receives from the drag queen down the hall. With superb performances from Robert De Niro and Philip Seymour Hoffman, this film unites two polar opposite characters and allows them to see past each other's animosity and grow in them a mutual earned respect. This film goes beyond just teaching us to look past first impressions. It talks about taking a deeper look within and confronting the things in ourselves and around us we don't like. As long as you get down on those Banana Republican knees and suck dick, honey, you're all my sisters. And I love you. I do. God bless you. And fuck off. Coming in at number 8 is 2000's Holiday Heart. Directed by Robert Townsend and written by Cheryl L. West, this TV movie is based on a play by Cheryl L. West and follows a drag queen who befriends a single mother and her daughter and takes them in in an attempt to protect them from the criminal environment around them. This beautiful movie addresses the corrupting nature of drug addiction and the bonds that are formed through struggle and adversity, as well as finding inner strength to move forward in life and not being held down by our circumstances. You act like God picked you and only you to give a hard life to. Well, look around, baby, because it's a big world out there. And believe me, it's turning mostly on misery. The only thing saving any of us is the good Lord's mercy. At number seven is 1982's Tootsie. Directed by Sidney Pollock with a screenplay by Larry Gelbart, Murray Shishkel, Barry Levinson and Elaine May, based on a story by Don McGuire and Larry Gelbart. This film follows a talented actor whose reputation for being difficult forces him to adopt a nude identity as a woman in order to land a job. A major critical and financial success, Tootsie utilises the main function of drag, which is to push the boundaries on what societal standards are and give it the big middle finger, but always doing so with an absurd but light-hearted amount of humour. Tootsie does all of this while pointing out issues in the subject of sexism, especially in the entertainment industry. Yes, I think I know what y'all really want. You want some gross caricature of a woman to prove some idiotic point, like, like power makes women masculine or masculine women are ugly. Well, shame on the woman that lets you do that, on any woman that lets you do that. Following in at number 6 is 1993's Mrs. Doubtfire. Directed by Chris Columbus with a screenplay by Randy Mayhem Singer and Mark Radcliffe based on the novel Alias Madam Doubtfire by Anne Fine, it follows a recently divorced actor who dresses up as a female housekeeper to be able to interact with his children. Using the medium of drag and its art form for allowing people to become another person, this film addresses the themes of divorce, separation and the effect they have on a family. It also allows us to watch our lead, played by Robin Williams, give a literal demonstration of what it means to walk in your spouse's shoes. But look at this nice thing that we have here. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Find me a find, catch me a catch. This is Larry from LC Screen Talk. And coming in at number 5 is 1996's The Birdcage. Directed by Mike Nichols and written by Elaine May, this uproarious, outrageous comedy depicts two families coming together thanks to their children getting married. I love this film. It was one of the big breaks and still remains as the highest grossing worldwide gay film of all time. It is extremely hilarious and, if I do say so myself, Nathan Lane is 
everything in this movie. Robin Williams and he play off each other and work within their comedic timings so well. This movie is a great film about acceptance and accepting not only who you are, but who your family is and who your family to be will become. I was adorable once, young and full of hope. Now, look at me. I'm this short, fat, insecure, middle-aged thing. I made you short? <laughs> Next at number four is 1982's Victor Victoria. Directed by Blake Edwards with a screenplay by Edwards and Hans Holmberg, it is a remake of the 1933 German film Victor Victoria. The film centres around a struggling female soprano who finds work playing a male female impersonator, but it complicates her personal life. When you think gender bending stopped at simply playing the opposite sex, Julie Andrews comes out playing a woman, pretending to be a man who's pretending to be a woman, and takes gender bending to a whole new level. Filled with incredible performances, a delicious layer of camp, and utterly delightful and unforgettable music, Victor Victoria is a brilliantly entertaining film that will never go out of style. It also has this hard-hitting message that the only way for a woman to make it in the industry is to be a man. Hold it. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's right? A woman pretending to be a man pretending to be a woman? Ridiculous. It, it's preposterous. In fact, it's so preposterous no one would ever believe it. And number three is 1995's Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Numa. Directed by Beban Kidron and written by Douglas Bean, this movie follows three New York drag queens who embark on a road trip from New York to Los Angeles. While highly unrealistic in so many ways, as I don't know any drag queen who would willingly stay in drag 24 hours a day during a road trip, this film is still one of the most popular drag films among the drag community for sheer unadulterated camp value, with some of the most quotable dialogue on the planet delivered by dragtastic performances from Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, and John Leguizamo. It's over-the-top fun perfection and the third film on this list to feature the late Robin Williams. <laughs> That little Latin boy in drag is crying. Find out why that little Latin boy in drag is crying. Little Latin boy in drag. Why are you crying? Coming in at number two is 1975's The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Directed by Jim Sharman with a screenplay by Richard O'Brien and Jim Sharman based on the 1973 musical stage production of the same name also by Richard O'Brien, the story sees a new engaged couple have a breakdown in an isolated area and must pay a call to the bizarre residence of Dr. Frankenfurter. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is a cult phenomenon that continues to build momentum as the years go by. With campy dramatic performances delivered to one of the most iconic soundtracks in history, this film puts the freaks of the world on display and makes them shine in a highly addictive manner, one that I don't ever plan on going to rehab for. It was a mercy killing. He had a certain naive charm, but no muscle. Oh! And busting out the gate in first place is 1994's The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Directed and written by Stephen Elliott, the film follows two drag queens and a transgender woman as they journey across the Australian outback from Sydney to Alice Springs for a potential gig. A film native to my home country, it helped introduce LGBT themes to a mainstream audience and in doing so became an award-winning cult classic. Another film ripe with quotable dialogue, it addresses many of the issues that are experienced by members of the LGBT community while also expressing issues experienced by your average middle-aged person. It's hilarious, it's hard-hitting yet tender and is accompanied by one of the most eclectic soundtracks in cinema history that truly encapsulates drag's duty to carry culture through history. Great. That's just what this country needs. A cock in a frock on a rock. Thank you for watching today's top 10. If you're not already, then be sure to subscribe and click that bell so you'll be notified of future top 10s. Comment down below and share some of your favorite drag films. Until next time, stay fabulous. Who do you think you are?